Good morning. Uh, Rick Roslin, Indiana, 1998. Used to be a fourth grade teacher, but now I'm a scientist in resident. Comes with a jacket. <laughs> uh, so really, I'm a real big deal if you're 10 years or younger. <laughs> the, uh, I have 7,000 kids that love doing science with me. And I'm here to tell you today the secrets to my success. Are you ready? ready. Yes. Ready. Yes. Teach with enthusiasm. <laughs> Teach with enthusiasm. I'll tell you, I like to take small things and, and help to understand big things in the world of science. A small thing like a, a, a balloon that kids get so excited when you give them a balloon. But a balloon like this has no energy. But when I stretch it, now I've given it elastic potential energy. And I bet most of you know what's going to happen when I let go. <laughs> ah, kinetic energy. And I can even use this simple balloon to explain big things about the world, about force and work. Work is when you take a force, a push or a pull, and you move an object. And now I'm giving it lots of potential energy. I hate this part. Uh, more? <laughs> more? Uh, so you guys probably know what's going to happen. Uh, I see some smiling and nodding, you know. Potential energy turns into uh, kinetic energy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just fix the balloon. <laughs> I tell you, uh, I love science. I love science for so many reasons, but mostly because it helps me understand questions about the world. It makes our world a better place. You know, science, it, it makes our, our safer cars, our energy efficient homes, cures for Emily diseases. I love science, and, and, I, and I love taking Emily kids with me on science. You know, it, uh, children are very curious, and I'm real curious. My why is because I like to understand the world and answer those curious questions with children. But, you know, I believe that uh, science is not a spectator sport. You know, everyone can participate. And, and I have heartfelt enthusiasm for science. And, you know, <laughs> my enthusiasm, I hope, inspires teachers and students to join me on my adventures. My wife once told me, she said, if you had that same enthusiasm and that same passion for Indiana history as you do with science, you'd probably dress up as George Rogers Clark. I said, no. I corrected her. I don't do that very often. I corrected her. I said, no. I would have my students and I dress up as George Rogers Clark, and we would march through the school cafeteria dragging beaver pelts behind us. <laughs> yeah. uh, when you teach with enthusiasm, your enthusiasm is contagious. It, it evokes the same emotions and behaviors in, in, in others. But I, I'll tell you, they, you gotta give kids something to be enthusiastic about. You gotta give them something to investigate. But I, I, I'll warn you, you have to be careful with how you do that. You know, I, uh, I learned this lesson the hard way. Uh, every summer I take students on uh, fossil trips, this is my summer camp, and we, we drive down to southern Indiana to collect fossils. I think, uh, uh, you know, I got a picture of our, our fossil trip, there you go. And we, we, it's on a two hour trip, and on the way down there I get the kids excited. I'm telling about all the cool things we're gonna find. We're gonna find horned corals and brachiopies and plesiopods and the elusive trilobite. The trilobite, an extinct creature that crawled on the ocean floor. Boy, wait till you find a trilobite. You know, and I get so excited. So we get down there, you know, on a two and a half hour uh, a dig site. There's a trilobite right there. And the kids get off the bus and everybody is so excited. And they come running back to me and they go, is this a trilobite? <laughs> uh, uh, no, sorry, that's a horned coral. Is this a trilobite? No, that's a, a plesiopod. But, and after a few moments, fewer and fewer students were coming to me to show me their discoveries. I'm thinking, that's kind of, that's wrong. These are great, these are great fossils. And these kids are amazing. What went wrong? And I got to thinking, what went wrong was my enthusiasm. I had inadvertently set them up to fail. So I thought, next week, it's gonna, we're going to have a different plan. So we get on the bus. We're headed down to southern Indiana. And I'm on the, on the trip telling them about all the cool things we're going to find. I tell them about, I tell them about horned corals. I, I even tell them about trilobites. But then I tell them, oh, wait till you find 
the glorious brachiopod. The brachiopod, this bivalve shell, this creature that's five times older than dinosaurs. Oh, when you find a brachiopod, like a brachiopod, like Brachypodia ponderosa, what a discovery that's gonna be. Mm -hmm. We get to the same site, the kids jump out, and within minutes, they're running to me to show me their brachiopods. <laughs> that bus trip was a different bus trip. That bus trip home, those kids' buckets were filled with fossil treasures. Now, I did not tell them that 95% of every fossil you'll find on that road cut is a brachiopod. <laughs> I didn't have to. You know, I, did, I didn't need to tell them that at all. We did not fail on that trip, nor have I failed on any fossil trip since. <laughs> <laughs> but there's our brachiopods. But, but failing is a big part of science. In fact, scientific knowledge is based upon the failures of past experiments. So, you know, but I think that you, if you have enthusiasm, it has the power to inspire kids. <coughs> now, how do I use enthusiasm to foster engagement? Well, first, I encourage participation. You know, when I was doing my balloon, I saw some of you smiling and nodding. I have balloons and brachiopods on your table. Uh, second, I like to look for students to smile and nod. When you smile and nod, I know I'm confirming my knowledge or my understanding. And finally, like, I like to do things that are like, ooh, verbally, ooh and ah. <laughs> and, and so, because uh, that tells me that the kids are, are getting this in there with me. And for, I like to e explode brains and open minds so new perspectives can come in. But mostly, I like to uh, do these things called discrepant events. A discrepant event, well, the best way to tell you is it's a lie. I like to, I like to lie in front of kids. So <laughs> I like to do something that your brain sees, but your eye, your, your, your eyes is in conflict. It's called a discrepant event. We'll get to some of those later. But, but uh, talking about ooh-ah moments, I've had lots of ooh-ah moments in my life teaching science. And I was at my, one of my science camps. I ran a camp for kids with type 1 diabetes for like eight years. And, and so we'd unload cases of Coke, and I was unloading cases of Coke, and it was kind of heavy, and I grabbed the Diet Coke, and it was kind of light, and so I'm, I'm going to carry the light ones. Kids, get those other ones. And, uh, <laughs> but I noticed, that's odd. Why is a case of Diet Coke, you know, less than the case of a regular Coke? And so in my mind, I was curious. I got to thinking, you know, I said, what do you think, kids? Can you tell the difference? And so we looked at these Cokes and these cans of Cokes, and I thought, hmm, interesting. Maybe we can learn something about this. So both cans. Same size, same shape, we call that congruent. Uh, this one, uh, you know, has, they both have 355 milliliters in them. This one has 39 grams of sugar, zero grams of sugar. Interesting. Hmm. The kids and I thought, maybe there's something about density we could learn with these. And so, this is my ooh-ah moment. Okay, let's see what's gonna happen. Because uh, in science, <laughs> uh, when I do an experiment, let's, let's just see what's gonna happen. Because you know, the first time you say what's gonna happen, it won't work. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> so, so here we go, let's see what happens. This, is, this might be my, my, my ooh experiment, let's see. Ooh. Mm. That's, that's all you got, really? <laughs> ooh. And thank you. And, and then, let's try this one. Let's see what happens here. Uh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> yeah, ooh, ah, that is so cool. So, you guys won't be able to go get drinks anymore without trying. <laughs> so I, the kids got to think that, okay, uh, what about to, uh, if this is in a bigger container? And then I thought, well, why not make it in a really big container? So uh, I thought, uh, why not strike, oh, put nine cases of Diet Coke on me oh. and walk to a swimming pool? And I will tell you, I was a bit nervous because it was my science enthusiasm getting ahead of my science knowledge. <laughs> I mean, oh, kids, don't try this at home. You know? And so let's see what happens. Here we go. And uh, three, two, one. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we <kind of> did. <laughs> uh, I floated, you know, I, I do believe in taking risks, take risks. I tell you, the, I have learned more when my experiments failed than I ever did when, when they went right. You know, I'll tell you, uh, I, I got to show you one more thing. Uh, Michael Faraday was a hero of mine. Michael Faraday, he's famous for a lot of, of discoveries. But what I love about Michael Faraday, he started in 1825 at the Royal Institute in London, the Christmas Science Lectures 
for children. He was one of the first scientists who did things for children. And so he loves demonstrations. And his first seven demonstrations had to do with the combustion of a candle. And he, like I, believed that if you learn about a small thing, it can help you explain, you know, a big thing. And so I get this candle, much like Michael Faraday. And you're probably inferring, inferring in observation science, that this is very much like his. But it's the, I really like it to make it a discrepant event, like this. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> so, <laughs> your brain thinks one thing, oh. and your eyes see another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teach with enthusiasm. You'll have more fun and learn more. Teach with enthusiasm. Look for the ooh-ah <laughs> moments and the discrepant events. Teach with enthusiasm. <laughs> you have changed the world. No. That was different with Rick.